Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the Book of Romans by the Apostle Paul. And we're using the commentary by Karl Barth, written in 1933, a neo-Orthodox commentary that was written against liberalism. We're going to conclude chapter 2. We're going to take a look at 2, 19 through 29. It's a very powerful conclusion and uh, especially, uh, uh, well, actually, 19 through 29, every verse, very, very powerful. Let's go to block one. As a believer, always remember the appeal of the prodigal son. Verses 19, 20, 21, and 22. Let's look at the Greek first. Then you yourself are persuaded that you are a guide to the blind a light to those in darkness, an instructor to the foolish, the embodiment of knowledge, the truth within the law. So you then, who teach others, do you not also need to teach yourself? You are the one who teaches another not to steal. Have you not stolen yourself? It is you who says, do not commit adultery. Have you not also committed adultery? You who says, abhor idols, yet you rob the temple. Now, Bart obviously has something to comment here. Christian mission depends on what is taught, but it must also be put into practice by those who are doing the teaching. We all stand as guilty of imprisoning the truth. All are in a process of transformation from corruption to incorruption. Bart says we must always appeal to God for assistance, always appeal to God for strength in mission. He says always remember the appeal of the prodigal son. Otherwise, our labor will never become Christian mission. And that's the truth. We must always have a heart that is repentant, metanoia, repentance, the word that uh, launched the Reformation. Remember, Martin Luther discovered that metanoia was mistranslated in the Catholic Bible. It was translated as do penance, and he studied the Greek and learned that metanoia means change of heart, change of mind. It means repent, not do penance. Bart says we need to have that attitude of repentance always in the midst of mission or our mission will never be sacred. It'll just simply be labor. Very good point. We need a repentant heart. Let's go on to block two and take a look at uh, 23 to 26. Ungodliness obscures the impress of revelation. Let's read the Greek here. You who boast in the law, through transgressing the law, you dishonor God. For the name of God is blasphemed through you among the Gentiles. Circumcision is profitable if you keep the law, but if you transgress the law, circumcision becomes uncircumcision. Therefore, if uncircumcision keeps the law, uncircumcision shall be counted as circumcision. Now, Karl Barth, he says, a possibility of blasphemy exists even with the elect. It has been so in all ages. Whenever man elevates his own righteousness. And in uh, Barth's day, Nazism was elevating German ethnicity. The white German male was elevated. And uh, it was a perversion of truth. It was demonic. And that's why he says, it's been so in all ages, whenever man elevates his own righteousness. Revelation becomes reduced 
to a worldly factor. Ungodliness obscures the impress of revelation. Human righteousness in itself is an illusion, says Bart. God reckons according to his own standard, his spirit penetrates the heart. He examines the heart. Human righteousness counts for nothing. In Paul's case, being a Pharisee among the Pharisees counted for nothing. Paul discovered that he had to abandon his previous self-identity and take up identity in the transcendence of Jesus Christ. The transcendent Son of God became the intersection, the place of new identity. As Paul puts it, and Christos, he discovered his new identity in Christ. And he discovered his righteousness in Christ, and only in Christ. Let's go on to block three. Okay, block three. I want to bring up something important here in block three. There have been three reformations in history concerning the righteousness mentioned in verses 27, 28, and 29. Go to note one in block three. Okay. In 1517, Martin Luther, through the posting of his 95 Theses, challenged works righteousness in the Catholic Church. In 1933, Karl Barth, with his commentary on Romans, challenged 19th century liberalism. And then in 1965 in Germany, 1967 in America, Jürgen Moltmann, through his Theology of Hope, challenged the God is Dead movement of the 1960s. Three Reformation movements. Three Reformation movements that all three sought to reclaim the conservative interpretation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Martin Luther opposed and challenged works righteousness. Karl Barth opposed and challenged 19th century liberalism. Jürgen Moltmann challenged the God is Dead movement of the 1960s in his Theology of Hope. I remember they put that book on the cover of Time magazine and even mentioned that this is the book that challenges God as dead. The God is Dead movement is challenged by Jürgen Moltmann. It was on the cover of Time magazine. There have been three German reformations and they all of course became worldwide reformations for the Christian church for the Christian community Martin Luther in 1517 Karl Barth in 1933 and then Karl Barth named as his successor Jürgen Moltmann in 1965 Moltmann sent his manuscript Theology of Hope to Karl Barth and Bart declared Jürgen Moltmann his successor, but it was another reformation against the God is Dead movement of the 1960s. So we've had Martin Luther, 1517, Karl Bart, 1933, Jürgen Moltmann, 1965 in Germany, 1967 in the United States. Now let's move on and take a look at the uh, the Greek for 27, 28, and 29. And these are very powerful verses by Paul because he spiritualizes the concept of circumcision. So we begin here with uh, verse 27. And uncircumcision will judge you who through the ladder of circumcision become transgressors of the law for outwardly one is not a Jew and neither is circumcision of the flesh the one who is a Jew is one inwardly as a circumcision of the heart in the spirit 
Not of men, but of God. Not of men, but of God. And Bart reminds us, the rewards of God are presented according to his will. The righteousness of the flesh avails nothing. Righteousness is exercised invisibly in the heart by the Holy Spirit. In the heart by the Holy Spirit. But this is those famous verses, 27, 28, and 29 in chapter 2, where Paul, for the very first time, spiritualizes circumcision, gets away from uh, the letter of circumcision, and teaches circumcision of the heart, true metanoia repentance. True metanoia repentance is circumcision of the heart, circumcision of the mind, circumcision of your motivational base, the core of your being. Brand new teaching by Paul, and in his day, earth-shattering teaching, very profound teaching. And uh, let's do just a real quick, I mean a very quick recap here. Let's go to block one. And just look at some reminders from Bart. Christian mission demands that what is taught must be put into practice. Because everyone is guilty of imprisoning the truth. We're all in a process of transformation from corruption to incorruption. We always must remember the appeal of the prodigal son. The prodigal son was the favorite parable of Karl Barth. His favorite parable was, the prodigal son. He always talked about Jesus Christ pursued us into the far country of our sinless, sinfulness. He pursued us in the far country of our sinfulness, just like the prodigal son. That was his favorite parable. Now block two, a possibility of blasphemy exists even with the elect. It's been that way in all ages, whenever man elevates his own righteousness. It certainly was that way in the rise of the Nazi regime. Revelation becomes reduced to a worldly factor. Ungodliness obscures the impress of revelation. Human righteousness in itself is an illusion. God reckons righteousness by his spirit that penetrates the human heart. And then block three, the rewards of God are presented according to his will. The righteousness of the flesh avails nothing. Righteousness is disclosed invisibly in the heart by the Holy Spirit. Very important uh, lesson on a really brand new spiritualization of the meaning of repentance, the meaning of true righteousness, groundbreaking new teaching by the Apostle Paul. Paul, the first theologian, taught the uh, circumcision of the heart, the circumcision of our motivational base, the circumcision of our core, of our being, what uh, defines us, a new self-identity, in Christ. And just our final recap, we're going to look at block three, note one again, and look at the three reformations that uh, listen to Paul. Because all three, you know, the reformation with Martin Luther began with the book of Romans. The 1933 reformation with Karl Barth included a commentary on the book of Romans. The Theology of Hope by Jürgen Moltmann certainly included an in-depth look at the book of Romans. So all three German reformations have been informed by the first theologian, the Apostle Paul, and his masterpiece, the book of Romans. So block three, note one, Martin Luther, 1517. With his 95 theses, he challenged works righteousness. Karl Barth in 1933 challenged 19th century liberalism. Jürgen Moltmann, 1965, 
challenged the God is Dead movement of the 1960s. All of them were informed by the Book of Romans. And that's going to wrap up a, a very important lesson that concludes Chapter 2. Our next lesson, we will begin Chapter 3.